Would I have the same offensive security certification training path today, knowing what I know as far as the cybersecurity job market, being in offensive security, going through a couple interviews earlier or this first half of the year, also seeing the training certifications evolve or go downhill and some of the newer ones. Um, I'm going to go into that and let you know how I would do it today. Again, this is for me, from my experience, doing the trainings that I have done today and the ones that I have, I have already accomplished. I'm going to let you know how I would do it different today. So, as I said, for me, going off of my experience, knowing what I know to get into the field of off offensive security, and just to be clear, I did not have any certifications uh, until 2024. So, just to be clear and fully transparent, I did not have any certifications, and I was already in the field as a penetration tester, offensive security uh, red teamer person. So, um, just for full transparency and understanding. Now, what I would do differently knowing what I know today, seeing how they've evolved, they have changed from all full-on access to yearly subscriptions, uh, I think some do monthly, quarterly, whatever. Seeing some tests and certifications evolve, the exams themselves, the trainings have evolved, uh, whether it's good or bad. Again, I'm going to go off of my experience coming in and me just starting the certification now instead of when I did the certification roadmap that I followed back then. Um, I would go with the PNPT first. Uh, here's why. Now, if you don't have any experience at all, definitely do the PJ, uh, what is it, PJPT. But before you even do that, I would start the Try Hack Me path. Make sure, number one, you even like it and it's going to be for you. Um, far as offensive security goes and also even before that make sure you have a linux and network concrete foundation understanding of how those two work so again that's a beginner that's in a whole nother video i'm going off of my experience and what i would do different what i know today number one i would do the pmpt first um, it is straight to the point the training is really good um, and it's actually a real life scenario um, and then you actually have to do a, a mini debrief um, and your report has to be to the T. Uh, I failed twice. No, failed once for the report. Uh, failed the report twice on the CPTS. Was it the CPTS or the CBBH? One of them I failed twice. The report. PMPT, I did. No, PMPT, I failed the report twice because I got, they gave me like a discount voucher to do the exam again and I had to redo the report. So um, that was the PMPT, my report change and that report and, and again to be clear for me each organization offsec pmpt or pcm and uh hack the box all the reporting is different what they want what they look for the majority of the foundation of the reporting for a pen tester is there but they want some different you know they want some different items uh, some might not even care you know one wants this one wants that or you know whatever but they are a little bit different. Some are, they want the full nine, the full scope, like hack the box. But anyway, I would do the PNPT first. Um, second, I am not gonna, I am not gonna go with the OSCP. Um, I know people still say it still holds weight. However, I'm seeing CPTS being more and more. And even going in some of the interviews that I did this first half of the year, um, and even talking with uh, some of the, the companies that I work with, like BreachLock and uh, what is it, uh, NCC Group and some of the other ones that we've worked with, they all say the same, that CPTS would rank higher than OSCP. And if, if they had to choose between one or one, they would hire the CPTS person hands down. Um, now, again, those are just the people I've talked to. Some people might talk to other people in those organizations. but that's what I have been given. Um, and then also the exam for me is way better. The training is way better, more thorough. Some might say, yeah, but there's no videos, but the offset videos were horseshit anyway. It was just like an AI voice back then. 
Um, and I don't know how it is now, so I can't talk about how it is now. I heard, uh, at least from what Tyler said in his video last night, I watched a couple, uh, was listening to it on, on the way home, um, that it has changed and it has, uh, from what he's been told, it's better. But uh, I personally don't know. I haven't seen it, nor do I have any plans to take the OSCP Plus anytime in the future. But I would not do offset, and especially for the price. Now, um, I'm just speaking on the OSCP. So for me, PNPT, CPTS, and then right after the CPTS, I would do the CBBH. Just because uh, the CBBH, you're able to get enough uh, cubes, and 55 to 60 percent of that training is already in the CPTS. So pretty much, you all you got to do is pay for your exam voucher. I would do that right after. Then after that, depending on which route you want to go, if you want to stay in pen testing and hit off a niche um, or go into the red team field, me, I'm red team. So I'm going CR, CRTO to get a full better understanding of the uh, C2 command and control framework. So again, that is Cobalt Strike. So when you go into organizations, you are more than likely going to utilize Cobalt Strike as well as others. Um, but the majority of them, you're going to have that Fortra license. Uh, we have the Fortra pack with Cobalt Strike, uh, Core Impact, and then also Outflank. Outflank also has their own C2, uh, which we will be utilizing that as well. Um, and then also, you know, your infrastructure usually is going to also have uh, Sliver, Mythic, Covenant, and uh, some of the other ones that, that are out there, you know, depending on what you or however your program is managed and developed. So for me, that would be my goal um, is to go into the red team after that. And then I would do some of the altered security, especially getting into Azure, everything moving into, what is it, Entra? Entra, Entra, I don't know, say it different. That would be my, my route. Um, and then after that, to get more into the Active Directory side, I would come back and hit the cape. Now, some people might, there's people that say, you know, you don't need certifications, you don't. Um, I like to do it because that's what makes me stressed out if I don't pass it. I just like to put stress on myself. Um, that's, you know, when I get bored and I just sit through the training, not knowing, I just, I have to have that end goal. If not, I'm just going to fuck it off. That's just my personality, right? If I'm bored, I'm going to be at the bar partying at Hooters with the girls. So that, and that's just me being honest with you and myself. That's just how I've always been. So I put a lot of pressure, not only that, because I know if, if I say I'm going to pass this exam or I'm, my goal is to pass this, this exam and I put it out there, that is going to be my goal. And I'm going to hamper, not only hamper through that training, but I'm going to make sure I understand it to a T. And even if I don't get the exam and, and shit happens, I'm still taking it serious. Uh, you know, I'm, and uh, like I said, I'm understanding everything to the T. I'm going to come back and still pass that exam. This year has been wacky, off the wall, uh, you know, as far as shit happening outside of work, career-wise. But I'm still planning on executing my goal. And the main thing for me is after DEF CON, the OSWE and OSEP. Those are my two main goals right now. Um, you know, the rest, I hope I could get them, knock them out, but those two are my, my, going to be my bread and butter for the year. And after that, hopefully I, those, everything goes well. The second half, I could hit the OSED and then get my ultimate goal of the OSCE3 or whatever the hell it is with the coin. That is my goal. Um, but yeah, you don't need this, all these certifications. I do that because I, I make sure I put the pressure on myself to make sure I go through the training and understand it and I could utilize it um, and build great notes, build out some more cheat sheets, uh, methodology sheets, whatever you want to call it, um, and then add those into, you know, when I do CTFs or pen tests or red team engagements. That is my goal. That is how I do it. Um, everyone's different. Everyone has a different way. Um, and do you need certifications to show you can do the job? Fuck no, you don't. I didn't have any certifications to get in. So, uh, I didn't get my OSCP till 2024. That was the first offensive security cert that I got. Um, so no, you don't. I just do it because I know my personality and I got to be honest with myself. If I don't put that pressure, I want to be lackadaisical knowing I'm not going to take the exam. I'm just going to sk skid off. And I've always been like that throughout. I mean, that's just one of my downfalls that I have. Uh, that's why kind of too is 
I want to put more pressure on myself to stay relevant overall in cyber with what I'm doing on the side. And, you know, it's going to make me push harder, especially when I'm handing other people's, um, you know, being responsible for other people's cyber stuff um, or, you know, systems, whatever you want to call it. That puts more pressure on me to get the job done and bust my ass, learn more and be in, involved in the community, knowing what's going on and also being ahead of the trend and the curves. Like I always talk about, uh, whether not just offensive security, but the overall realm in cyber, threat hunting, incident response, new products and technology, knowing what some of the key players are on the roadmap. So that's that's where my mindset comes in like that. It's not about being a cert collector. And even if you were, these certs are practical. They're not multiple choice. So, I mean, I'm not going to knock someone for having practical cert, uh, certs because they're actually doing the work. So number two, what I would do different um, is actually, I said this in my earlier videos, the, especially the offensive security, uh, realm in YouTube was saturated with people doing walkthroughs or, you know, boxes and stuff like that. I didn't want to do that. Um, that wasn't my whole goal to, to be on YouTube for that. However, I wish I could go back and change that because that is showcasing your skills and pretty much your showcase that that's your, that's the this is the resume of the future um you know regardless of what you want to believe is everyone going to do it no but that is showcasing your resume and i see a lot of people on linkedin even to this day hate on uh, a lot of my friends that are on youtube um some of the people that i've seen on youtube but aren't even uh you know i don't know them personally hopefully you can meet some of them at uh you know black hat or defcon but i see a lot of people on linkedin hate um, and it's like, you're just mad because they're out there that have the balls to put themselves out there, uh, and showcase their skills and they're getting noticed because what is the new wave of marketing is social media. And whether you're doing it for a business or you're doing, and, and these people are, their brand is their business, right? Um, like I said, when you go into a job, treat yourself like a business, even though you're a double W2 employee, um, their, their brand is, they are their brand and that's their business. That is their new resume. They are showcasing their skills. They are, they are marketing their, their experience, their skill set, et cetera. So a lot of people hate because they don't have the balls enough to do it. And I ain't going to lie. When I did those first couple of boxes, I was fucking sweating. That is different. That is, that is, that is hard. Um, especially when you're live. Um, I just did YouTube and Facebook for now. Um, I want to get my my uh, company page, but you need 100 followers. So if you can, please go follow OX3 Security on Facebook so we can get that uh, live going. But that shit is hard. It's not, it just, I was like really, really, ner I, I haven't been nervous like that in a long ass time. I'll put it that way. Um, and then commands weren't working. I had a funky ass box. I was like, oh shit, I got evil. I had, I think I had to do it like three or four times. Went back, finally was able to log in with the evil WinRM. Fucking thing was stuttering, did not give me the flag. I had to restart it again. Boom, done. I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> but it is really nerve wracking. So, um, you know, I've never knocked anyone for that. I just, for me, it's just, it wasn't what I wanted to do. That was my plan. My thing was just to show people that you can get into cyber. Um, without certs, it is possible. Um, and also for me being transitioning fully onto cyber at a later, a later stage in my life and career that it is possible. Yes, it's a risk, but it is possible. Just make sure you know your shit, you got your stuff in order. And also that cybersecurity is not easy, but a lot of people, um, well, a lot of people that are so-called influencers. Um, you could tell the influencery type people from the actual people that do it day to day as, as their real job. It's not easy. It's not like that. Um, you're not on the beach getting hammered uh, with your MacBook Pro just chilling. Uh, it's it's stressful. Things come up, um, and it's hard work. You gotta you gotta stay on top of it uh, and keep on learning. So, um, sorry for the little rant there, but that would be my second one is. Get on, whether it's Instagram, I would do YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram for me um, to showcase your skills and your skill set. Um, 
I wish I would have done it earlier. That's all. I, I mean, that's all pretty much I could say. Um, and also, it helps out with your YouTube metrics when you go live as well. I did not know that. So uh, I'm going to start doing more and more in those. I might even start doing some of the Pwn Labs. I want to do those over so I could get those certifications as well um, sometime and just do the whole path uh, way. And also, I want to hit up the Google because they finally came out with Google about a couple of months ago, I think, maybe a little longer than a couple of months ago because Google Cloud was, at least for me, I didn't find any other training that did Google. Now they finally came out with it, which is something I was looking for. I think I talked about that in a couple of other videos. But um, yeah, that would be my route. Um, again, that, again, for me starting over, I'm not telling you this is how you should do it. I'm not telling you my way, it's all end or be all, whatever. This is how I would do it knowing what I know now as far as the cybersecurity market, a job market, and also seeing how some of the transitioning changes with certification, some of these companies, the training. That's how I would do it myself. Um, if I had to start over with the certs, uh, that I got. That's what I would do. Um, and then again, second is showcasing my skills day one. Get the blood, get the butterflies out first. Um, it's not going to go pretty. It didn't for me. Uh, at least I don't think so. Um, but that's what I'm going to start doing more of. And, uh, you know, showcasing your skills, uh, hopefully being able to collab with people uh, in the future on, you know, being able to showcase some new products, like some new autonomous testing. Hopefully, you could get that. Thing going with breach lock and uh yeah that's pretty much it for the video um you know real simple just what i would do differently today um given the changes uh with some of the certification companies trainings job market and then also doing the new resume showcasing your skills on social media linkedin youtube and instagram so please like share comment subscribe let me know if you agree or disagree and uh i'll see you guys on the next one tonight I'll be live on InfoSec Pat's Thirsty Thursdays, 6 p.m. Central. So um, we're going to talk about conferencing, some of the changes, and some of the interviews. I'll probably go into more depth of what they, what they asked, um, some of the questions. And again, these were from pen testing, red teaming, different sectors. Um, and again, I got the questions that they gave me from AT&T themselves. I posted those in his Discord. If you want to go in there, feel free. Uh, it's pretty standard off the chart for both, except, you know, the pen testing ones, they didn't go too high level into C2 stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'll be going over that, touching on some of those. And uh, I'll see you guys tonight. Tune in and um, see you guys on the next one. Have a good one.